This is, uh, this is Sportsmobile, been in business for 55 years, doing Class B RVs is our specialty. And this is the Sprinter 2016 four-wheel drive. Awning on the outside, um, those are optional. A small flip-down shelf here with an induction cooktop. A lot of our customers aren't putting built-in cooktops since the vehicle is so small, so we're going all electric. We've got an exterior outlet right here, 110. We've got porch light on the side here. We've got an exterior shower hookup with hot and cold water. Come to the back here, we got a little storage in the doors, blackout curtains, storage under the sofa. The back cushion extends the front bed, so you have a 75 by 54 inch wide bed. We've got a closet storage here. We've got shades on windows, um, LED lighting throughout the vehicle, uh, diesel systems, like I said before, electrical systems, refrigerators come around the driver's side this is where all the business happens where all the hookups are you got the city water hookup you've got your 30 amp electrical inlet you've got a cable hookup we put a small little LED light out there so at night you can see your hookups we've um, we've line X to the bottom of the vehicle's rocker panels just for utilitarian we have a lot of customers have chips on there this takes care of all of that Moto GT tires vents up on the front windows just to give a little bit extra ventilation up on the front We've got a small snorkel here. We've got the high intensity discharge lighting. We blacked out the hood. We've put a uh, LED light strip on the step. We've got a large 54 inch curved LED light strip up on the top. Up front in the cab, swivel seats are just about standard on all of these. It helps increase the size of the interior. It's just about a must for most, uh, let's say, small class B customers. We've got a small three cubic foot refrigerator underneath the galley, a drawer, a microwave. Inside the cabinet of the microwave is a porta potty. We just push and twist and open, and we've got a porta potty cabinet there. We've got sink on the countertop. We've got space for a cooktop if somebody wanted to add one in the future. But again, like I said earlier, most people are going portable and all electric. We've got storage here. This cabinet is removable. If customers want to get it out of the way for more storage. If they need storage on the weekend, they can move this out of the way. Again, that, that's a sofa for three people. It's got three seat belts. Folds out into, again, a uh, 75 by 54 inch bed. On the driver's side, you've got a storage cabinet that can also be a sliding pantry that slides out. It's up to the customer. Just twist that handle to open that. Mm. There you go. Probably should have cleaned that out a little bit for when you have company. <laughs> and again, there's shelving right here. Storage just is shelving in here. And then the back is for hanging clothes. So you got the clothes hanging, shelves, storage. You're taking a, the, that's the back of the penthouse bed that's pushed up against the back for storage in conjunction with the bed hanging from the ceiling. That lowers down and then you have over a six and a half foot by 40 inch wide bed. We've got curtains on all the windows. We can insulate the canvas for extreme cold weather if needed. This one's not insulation. There's five windows that open. They have screens. Three of the screens open, so if you need to take pictures out, you've got a clear view. This top is power. We have manual and power. The power top's just a button. You hit the button, about a minute later, the top goes up and down. A power top will be able to hold up to 200 pounds of gear on your roof. So you can leave the gear up there, raise and lower the top. It's our most popular option for the tops, but manual is available also. The cab itself is pretty much all stock the Sprinter. It's got a three liter V6 diesel. Um, again, four wheel drive from the factory. It's a shiftable four wheel drive with high and low range. Um, it's got the ability for lane assist, blind spot avoidance. It's got a backup camera. It's got navigation available on it. It's got steering wheel controls with Bluetooth capability. It's got just about all the options customers would want up on the cockpit. When we order these vehicles, we order them with all the creature comforts, and then the customers tell us what to do on the rear of the vehicle. This one here, I'd say, is a little bit above a standard unit with some of the four-wheel drive accessories on the outside of the vehicle. This vehicle is going to be a little bit over $100,000. You can get into a four-wheel drive for a little bit under a hundred to as high as a customer wants to go and then the two-wheel drives usually go from 75 
8000 and up. And again, we let our customers pick the options, so there's a wide range of cost on this. How you'd find us is sportsmobile.com on the website, three locations. We've got the Austin, Texas location is where we're from at the show. We've got a Huntington, Indiana, and then we've got a uh, Fresno, California location. Um, Again, the website is very informative. That's where we like customers to go to, to start seeing how to design pricing and how to get a hold of us for uh, uh, more information. Hello, I'm Jesse, and this is my tiny home on wheels. It's a 1978 Dodge Commander. I got her for 1,900 bucks off of Craigslist, 54,000 original miles. And I spent a year and three months renovating her and bringing her back to life. By the time I talked to the guy the next day, 11 people had already called because he was listing her for so cheap. This used to be uh, your standard camper seating arrangement. It was like a horseshoe and then it had a table in the center that dropped down and there was another bed. I didn't need to accommodate that many people and I wanted it to be more spacious. I put these chairs in and then I lifted this up to be table height. If I need more cooking space, I can do that proper meal. So this goes into a storage compartment that's outside and the cat box is in there and then I just have uh, more surface. I have like fruit and avocados and plant. And moving into the cockpit of Mander, I have a single bed up here that actually drops down which is why I felt so comfortable getting rid of the extra bed there. But it does drop down quite a ways. So it's nice if I have a guest, they have their own little sleeping quarters. There's a lot of original stuff happening up here still. This is like you step into 1978. It's coming up on my six month anniversary of being on the road and I have already replaced countless fuel filters, two transmission lines, the starter, probably a lot of other things too that I can't really recall off the top of my head. For my solar panel, it's a 230 watt. This area, I just did a new countertop and a new sink. It used to have two shallow basins, which I thought wasn't very practical. I just wanted one deep basin. And when I do the dishes, I pop this up and this is kind of like my area. So this faucet was up so high and so close to the back of the sink that it would just, water would go everywhere and it was so annoying. But I got this for like eight bucks and it is a super game changer. So you can like change it around. It has two different kinds of flow. Down here, here's, here's a hot tip, child locks. I was having a really hard time figuring out how to keep these closed without it being uh, super visual. So this is my four burner cooktop and my oven, which people always think is a microwave, but it's not. And this is original. The oven actually had never been used before. 99.9% .9 of the time I cook at home. Did I ever say that I call my unit Mander? <laughs> Her name's Mander, cause uh, saying the commander all the time is a mouthful. So this is my fridge. I run it primarily off of propane. It can be run off of 110 as well. I knew that if I was gonna be living in here full time, I would need a shower that I could move my body in. And I did this on the ceiling, something I already had in my apartment and I just wanted to repurpose it and then did a new faucet and a new shower head. And this is actually an RV shower head. It looks fancy, but it has the pause thing on it and it's meant for low pressure. It's, it's really nice when I do treat myself to a shower in here. I really enjoy it. I'm like, ooh, I built this. It's amazing. My uh, compost toilet can get mounted here. It worked out really well because there was already a venting stack uh, for the sink that I could plug my toilet vent to. And then this is um, another crafty moment. When I got Mander, she was severely water damaged. Kind of everywhere, but mostly like starting here and back. I didn't know how bad it was until I started investigating and it unfortunately uh, was pretty bad. So I had to rebuild half of this wall. I really think people are capable of so much more than they give themselves credit for. and. I think that's true, you know, for other people, so I have to think that's true about myself. And, you know, we just have to keep on persevering and we can accomplish it, you know. So, over here, 
is the closet. This is another reason how I knew Mander was mine. There's like a good amount of storage. I have, you know, my hanging and I have a little shelf up here and then I have some bins here and four drawers. And then I installed this door, which is an easy peasy solution to just have some privacy. All right, so coming to my bedroom. This is where I spend the majority of my time, I won't lie. This is actually where I had to build um, a new ceiling and then the wall is new on this side. I got some bedside stuff in here and nothing ever falls out. I had some negative space so I figured this would be a great spot for the cats to lounge because I have so many windows back here. They absolutely spend a ton of time back here. This is like the chill zone for all of us. Sometimes it sucks with the sun coming in because um, it can get quite warm, but when everything's open, there's so much breeze that blows through. I was really kind of concerned about the expanding and the shrinking that floors do when you're not in a temperature controlled environment. I went with this as a linoleum product and it's free floating, so you don't glue it down, which allows it to expand and shrink all at once without warping. So I'm going to show you where I keep the cat box. My hood ornament. And then this is where, oh, there's people there, but <laughs> this is where I keep the cat box. I knew I had to have something secondary. I decided to go with a larger scooter and it has, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. I'm grateful that I have it. If you want to follow along um, on my adventure and uh, trust me, it is an adventure. It's a girl and her commander. We'll come inside and here's our little shed and that has our generator, our tools. We got little wood for inside. My brother made this. So now we are in the immaculate kitchen of our cabin here. The oven wasn't here when we bought it. We brought the oven in, got some basic shelving, you know what I mean? This happened this year. We got a filter that hooks up to the well, goes through the filter, goes into the tank upstairs, which you'll see. And then we filter it through here. So. We do filter it twice before we drink it. The guy who built this house, his name is Wayne Sapp. He was from Iowa. Him and his wife bought this land and built the house. They were gonna use it as a summer retreat, but then they had, before he finished the house, they had a big tornado storm that blew down their biggest barn in Iowa, and they needed money. So they ended up turning around and selling the place, and uh, that's why we got it for such a good deal. We put the wood stove in. It works amazing. It's an earth stove not cast iron, it's steel. And yeah, that's our, our money maker right there. It really heats up, we heat up our water on it. A lot of times we got cast iron skillets we put on there, so we'll heat water and cook. Got this sweet little fan that spins as it heats, and that spins or pushes some air around. Got a nice little hide -a bed here, little corner area where we hang out. When it's clear, like right now you can see a little bit, but looking to the west, there's Mount Redoubt, which is a volcano. And yeah, our northern view is to Risky Valley. All right, so our bathroom here, like I said, is unfinished because I'm not really that great of a carpenter. Now we have a toilet that runs, which I don't care about, but my girlfriend cares about, and I can understand why. It's nice when people come over to be able to send them to the toilet instead of the outhouse. We go to Anchor Point, it's eight miles away and you know, going to town to check the mail or whatever, and there's a nice laundry mat, shower place, pay five bucks, 11 minutes of hot shower. Walking up the stairs to my loft, which is actually a sauna, and <laughs> when we have it heated up in here, it's a beautiful thing and a bad thing, you know, having a loft like this. We don't have an overhead fan, which we would really like to get. Pretty simple, you know, got our bed, our little table area, a rocking chair, you know, a friend gave us, our little hot water heater. Earlier, I made a mistake, because usually I have Levi, who's the plumber, fill up the water tank, you know, we run the well. It's our little closet space, you know, it ain't nothing spectacular, man, but it's easy, it's simple, you know, I don't spend a lot of time looking at what I'm gonna wear. If it's winter, I mean, literally, you can lay in bed, and you can see the northern lights. I mean, my girlfriend's first winter was here in Alaska, her first winter. And on her birthday, October 1st of that year, I remember I woke her, for some reason I had to wake up and go to the restroom and I went outside on the deck and I looked up and they were just all over the sky. I was like, oh my God. I came upstairs like, Sunrisa, Sunrisa, you gotta go, check it out, check it out. 
She's like, what, what? And she gets out there and literally just cries. She's just crying. Oh my God. Yeah, she was up for like 45 minutes, you know? Like you can walk probably longer. Me, I've seen it so much, you know? I grew up in Nome, but seen it so much. It's like, oh yeah, the Northern Lights, it's great, you know? But it is really nice to be able to be in your own home, look out the windows, go on your deck. There's no light pollution, which is another huge quality in off the grid living. No light pollution, I see the stars, so it's nice. Yeah, this is the spot. I am Richard. And I'm Sophie. And we came from New Zealand to visit uh, North America. Up the front, it's uh, pretty much a plain old simple Sprinter van. Nothing out of the ordinary when you look through the windows. The important feature, I guess, is the curtains, which are tucked up in here. There's two of them. Keep light in and keep light out to be discreet and they also velcro down the sides. So they completely uh, stop the light, especially with the double thickness. The velcro really goes to the very top so that there's absolutely no light coming through. We'll see later we also have something for our skylight to make sure there's no light here either. So we can uh, cook, we can uh, read books, we can have all the lights we want and uh, it's impossible not to see from the outside. So this is the kitchen. We've got our sink that was actually made out of a just a stainless steel bowl. A salad bowl. A salad bowl. I like two dollars at Walmart. Five bucks or something <laughs> instead of 200 for an official sink. Got a bit of food storage. Put our two tanks, grey and fresh. We chose to go for that system um, of 15 litre tanks just because it's so easy to fill them up and empty them. But we can fill them up at any uh, tap, any drinking fountain, we can fill the water. And the grey water we can empty in any toilet, down any sink basically. We just have to disconnect it, go and tip it, it's really easy. On this side we've got our little gas hob. And then we've got uh, some drawers. Got soft closes on them, so all from IKEA. And they, put together. they stay out too, so if you're on like a slope, they don't go back in, so that's quite convenient because you don't always choose where you park. And then under, we've just got a little bit of extra storage for fruit and veggies. And We've got a big shelf which is really convenient for all the bulky stuff that doesn't really fit nicely in the cupboard. A little light which is uh, operated from here. The heat, it's quite, it's resistant, uh, it's very easy to clean, um, that was the whole point of having that. Um, and behind that, which we don't see, there's actually like nearly two inches of foam. So it's the whole van, the van has been insulated and sprayed with foam so that we don't uh, get too hot or too cold and also that works quite well. We've got our fridge over here. Uh, this is a 12 volt fridge, uh, so it doesn't run on propane. It's very economic uh, on the battery. We have a secondary battery but we can be stationary for a week with no solar or input of any kind and the battery won't die. We've got these storage boxes, little latches to stop them flying forward when we drive, pretty simple. They just, next to that we've got a bit of a shoe rack and a fire extinguisher. Our little couch, this is where we sit for dinner. We can also remove the fridge and have a guest. Our dining room table is actually attached to the, the side door. It's in here. It's super tight between the, the van and the door when the thing's closed, so it's got this little notch out of it. A little groove in here, but it's just a case of uh, opening a couple of latches and then that folds down. On top of the fridge, we've got our library. Then we've got, I uh, think, the thing that we're quite happy about, which is the skylight. Ah, uh, yes. The skylight was obviously so. a huge thing because um, you have to make a hole in the roof. It can be locked also so that no one can open it. And it can also be locked with a little bit of a vent, a crap, um, yeah. which means that you can leave it all day to dry the van if required. And it opens fully. All the way um, to So that's a really nice feature and it brings a lot of light. To the, to the van. It's also been really good for our wildlife photography. Yes. When we drive down the road and there's a bear and Sophie can come back here and stick her head out. And take pictures. And take some pictures of a, be of a bear or a moose or, or something like that safe from inside the van. Mosquitoes want to come in. Mm -hmm. 
but we've got our uh, anti mosquito feature, which we design ourselves too. It's got a couple of suction cups, and some elastic, and some toggles, and we can we can stick that up to the glass. That keeps out the mosquitoes, nice and easy. Or if we want to sleep at night, we've got a, a piece of foil and a, a foam cushion, basically cut to fit, and that blocks out all the lighters. It's completely black in here. We've got the bed, which is our last. Uh, Nice feature. I can certainly lie down in here without having to have um, bent legs or anything like that. Same as me. So, uh, so, uh, so that works. And, and where we were setting up the height of the bed, we were very intentional to make we wanted to be able to sit up in bed, but at the same time, we wanted as much storage space underneath as possible, which which we'll show you in a moment. We've got a little USB plug up here, so we can plug in a tablet or something, or we'll have our phones running off there. We've also got a couple of little boxes here. Handy for kind of uh, bedtime things. What about the side panel in here? That came all from Home Depot. A third of an inch, so it's nice and light. It's all varnished and everything. Okay, so this is the back of the van. Down in this one we've got uh, spare water tanks. A few of them poked in here. If you want to continue to the outside, we intentionally chose a very discreet vehicle. It's got no windows. Park anywhere we want, basically. So. Thanks for watching our van tour. Um, if you do want to know more, then you could email at customstealthcampervans at gmail.com. And if you want a van to be uh, custom made for you, then send us an email. We can uh, work that for you. So hi, my name is Zane Fisher. I'm the owner of Extraordinary Structures and this is our Saltbox Tiny House. Saltbox is uh, it's a vernacular New England style of roof and although we're out here in New Mexico, the defining feature is that it's an asymmetrical roof line. At this point, anytime you have that kind of asymmetrical peaked roof, it's re usually referred to as a salt box. In our case, we did it both for sort of architectural flair and also so that one side of the house would have exactly the right length for a standard solar panel. So the roof is set up to take a whole bunch of solar. So this is our kitchen. What we do is we like to do a, a single core um, sort of plumbing infrastructure wall so that your bathroom and kitchen are back to back. You're minimizing the amount of plumbing and we're also using that to bias the weight inside the trailer for the best hauling characteristics. But we wanted kind of luxury too. One of the things that bugs me when I visit tiny houses is if they've got a sink that's too small because I, I do a lot of cooking personally. So we wanted to have a nice big sink. Um, so this is bigger than you're going to have in, in some apartments. And then we have a sort of a diverse cooking ecosystem here from a, a convection toaster oven to a two burner induction. This fridge is a drawer. There's a drawer situation right here. So it just fits right into the uh, counter. It's small, but it's very efficient. Lots of drawers, lots of storage. In fact, I sometimes think there's too much storage in this place. The bathroom is, um, you know, it's bound to be small. Right? It's in a tiny house like this, but we wanted a different characteristic. We have sort of a Scandinavian wood cabin style interior going on and we wanted to sort of, you know, create a whole different environment. So we've got this bright white acrylic in here, which gives you a, a sort of a modern flair, but that's um, tempered with the same mesquite floors and then this deep um, cedar Japanese Ofuro style soaking tub. Bit of luxury and some brightness um, helps to make a small bathroom a lot more livable. This is a composting unit here, Swedish style. Over the bathroom is a natural place to have a small loft. Can sleep up there, or a kid can sleep up there, or a guest, or I think of it as kind of a reading nook. And we just have a ladder permanently mounted on the wall for a quick climb up there. And it turns out it's a nice space. The primary bed, we're using a horizontal Murphy, um, or a wall bed system. So it just comes down right here. And this guy is what actually ends up supporting your bed. A little reading light, outlets at bed height, and you're right next to the window. What we do here at Extraordinary Structures is a panelized construction system. We do a computer model of anything that we're going to build. We break it into component sections, and then we use a CNC router or an automated system to carve out those panels in precise shapes and lock them together, kind of like a 
Legos for big kids or something like that. So in this unit you can see um, the joints here where each two foot wide panel connects to the next one. So once we've designed a structure, it actually assembles quite quickly. This little stove it was invented for marine applications out of the Seattle area. So for um, fishing crews going out early um, who want to warm up. And it, it's a super efficient burn in a very small package. Primary heating and cooling in this unit is done with a mini split. So you don't actually need heat. It's uh, you know, pretty nice, especially in the winter get back from a day of um, skiing or snowshoeing or just hard work and be able to light up a little fire. Kind of adds that something special that makes you feel like um, tiny house living is a luxury rather than uh, something that you're giving something up for. I see it um, as we work through zoning issues, I see it having a pretty um, large impact on, uh, on cities where we see prices escalating out of control and um, a need for higher densities but in different form factors um, and I, I see it as a, a way to add to a sort of healthy housing ecosystem overall as we move forward so um, I think there's a place for it and as we see um, you know we're doing a panelized system that allows for sort of rapid assembly and there are other people out there who are not just building small but also innovating in the housing construction area um, and so to see companies coming up like that is exciting and I think it does point to the future.